So good afternoon, everyone. Uh, today in this topper talk, we are uh, meeting a young lady candidate who has secured All India Rank 11. Uh, welcome, Divyani, and tons of congratulations to you. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you. And uh, you know, for the past three years consecutively, I have been interacting with rank 11s, and fortunately, all of them have been women. Like uh, before you last year, it was Nupur. Nupur Goel, ma'am. Yes, and before that, it was Pujya. Now she's in yes. Pujya. Yeah. Yes. Yes. yes, I remember. So it's like, uh, that's also something very interesting, very uh, lovely coincidence that I know all, the, all three of them. And the three of them are from my side as well as from the XIS team. How has been your journey, Divyani? Because this is not your first attempt, I suppose. Yeah, Divyani? Right, ma'am. It's actually my fifth attempt. So my journey with UPSC has been quite long and I'm really happy that it has come to a beautiful conclusion now. Uh, talking about my journey, uh, my initial attempts were uh, not as well planned and not as well prepared. As a result of that, uh, in my first two attempts, I couldn't clear the prelim stage. But uh, consecutively, in my third, fourth, and fifth attempt, all the three times I gave interview. Uh, in my third attempt, I gave interview but uh, could not uh, get into the list. In my fourth attempt, uh, I succeeded and I got All India Rank 222. Uh, based on that, I was allocated Indian Audit and Account Service. And uh, as part of the training program, I am currently the, uh, under probation at National Academy of Audit and Accounts in Shimla. And this is my fifth attempt and by God's grace, I've gotten a very good rank and really happy about that. Yeah. Okay, Divyani, like, this is your fifth attempt. So you are the right person to tell because you said like initial attempts were, you were not that much focused. So it means like we should not be unfocused from the very beginning thinking that, okay, let's try and see how the exam is. One can, one should be very focused from the very beginning so that uh, attempts could not be wasted. What's your take on this, Divyani? Right. So I wouldn't say that I was not focused. It was just that I could not understand the temperament of this exam. And that's very important that from the get-go, you should be able to understand the demand of them if you get that right if you get the nerve of the exam right i think one good attempt is just enough to crack the exam yeah and uh, rightly you said even i always talk to my uh, students that see you need to understand that this is a competition and you need to understand the nerve of the exam so once you catch the nerve of the exam consecutively people are clearing and improving their ranks yeah okay Devani, what right, are the optional uh, my option is anthropology. This time, anthropology, many students have uh, shown good result. So, like, how come anthropology, you are an engineer, so what, what made you choose anthro? Right. So, after my engineering, uh, when I started with the preparation, I went through the syllabus of a lot of subjects, and uh, three, four optionals really interested me. One of them was anthro, then there was political science, which was also very good. And sociology is also one of the very popular optionals, and I also uh, dabbled into it a little bit. But uh, at the end of it, I felt that uh, practically, uh, anthro would suit my temperament more and as an administrator as well anthropology has a lot of relevance in the service as well because it tells you about the tribal issues and gives you a flavor of uh, Indian society as well so based on all these factors and the past trends of how the option is performing I felt that anthro would be a good bet for me okay okay Divyani, it's like GS Generally, you know, candidates are very scared about GS because they say that everything under the sun comes in the GS paper. So what should be the strategy for GS? Right. So uh, it's actually a misnomer that anything and everything would just 
randomly come from anywhere upsc has very clearly delineated the syllabus for all the four papers and that should be your base of preparation every word that is written in each of the gs papers you should have write about 200 to 50 words of a uh, good quality content on them uh so it's not like they would ask anything if you just see the previous years papers there are some areas that the examiner particularly wants to test you on and if you uh, base your preparation on previous years papers on the syllabus that's outlined and of course newspaper readings what are the current issues that are going on i think the papers can be managed fairly well yeah yes mapping of your syllabus and previous year question paper is one of the most the most important things to understand this exam okay uh, see this is your fifth attempt divyani so this whole journey of five years it has its own ups and downs so how to cope up with this how have you coped up with this because many of them get frustrated also right so one of the reasons i wanted to do this topper stock was because uh, in my previous attempts i actually benefited able to clear in successive attempts but is still working hard at it and is able to clear in his or later attempts that gives you a sense of motivation that okay i can also do it i should also not hang my boots just yet and try for the exam and i think exam why you are appearing for this exam if that is correct you would always sooner or later find that in you that you would want to study again and try one more attempt and in this exam i cannot stress enough the importance of a good support system for me it was my parents my sister my teachers my close friends and every time i felt demotivated i felt that you know i'm trying to them and they then if i like all feel that you know we are doing so much answer writing in gs and optional already essay is something that very general and we'd be able to write it but uh, it's not really like that you need to understand that the structuring of an essay is very different from the structuring of a gs or an optional answer the marks so that paper should never be neglected in my opinion uh then gs2 and gs3 papers are something where there's a lot of a lot of good statements and these this kind of information is readily available so these papers uh a lot of knowledge with answer writing you have to test yourself that whether the content that you have learned you are able to execute and present that information in a meaningful way in a period of 7 to 8 minutes and constant revision reading less books but reading them again and again and building the quality of your answers is what i really focused on yes answer writing or essay practice everything is very important and i think when you are joining some test series also just don't go for the sake of writing answers rather go with the intention of improving it with every feedback that you receive so divyani how have you practiced your essay and your answer writing like when did you start your writing practice immediately before the prelims or you have been doing it throughout the year what is your advice uh so generally it's advised that you do it throughout the year maybe one or two questions every day but when you begin with preparation there's so much that you have to read it's difficult to really do that every day but that that you have between prelims and mains that is the time when you absolutely must do answer writing daily you should solve you should be solving papers every weekend for sure but the sooner you get into it after you have built a decent amount of knowledge the sooner you get into it the better it is uh as far as the amount of answer writing that i have done since i was already under training here so i did not do a lot of answer writing in this attempt but i did a fair bit in my previous attempts so once you understand uh, like how to go ahead with the answer writing so once you have done a fair amount of your homework then at least uh, like you can uh, skip 
some moments and then you can continue with the answer writing. Yeah. Then uh, like prelims are approaching Divyani and so many candidates would be appearing for prelims. And prelims, it is said, is very dicey, one of the diciest parts of this uh, whole journey. Because many times you get selected and when you are writing an improvement, then you don't get selected even in prelims. So how to prepare for prelims? <clears throat> Uh, so this year prelims is just right around the corner. So as far as this year's prelims is concerned, I would not suggest anybody to read any new books right now. Whatever you have read, revise it, revise it again and again, and make sure that you remember those things. Now for prelims, one thing that I always say is previous year's papers are very, very important to go through. UPSC is actually repeating one or two questions. So if you do the previous year's paper, say from 2013 onwards, you are actually getting a short of two to three questions. And it's that gap that's going to, you know, get you into the list or out of the list. Uh, as far as is concerned, of course, you do your basic readings and after that, do your mock test religiously. And not just seeing what score you're getting, but it's important to go through the answers and read the answer properly so that your knowledge is also getting augmented. Uh, one more thing that's really important in prelims now is that you have to attempt. You have to intelligently guess. You cannot just attempt 60 questions and rely on accuracy because the paper itself has become so unpredictable that it demands you to attempt more questions so that there's sufficient cushion that even if you get some questions wrong, you are still through. So you have to develop that intuition, that gut feeling that this is the right option. And that can only come when you practice mock tests when you learn the art of how to eliminate an option. So for that, a lot of mock test practice is required. Uh, Divyani, could you just very quickly share uh, this art of elimination? Because that is something, you know, students are always asking how to eliminate in the problem. So if there are some tips that you could share. Right. So uh, UPSC actually does give certain options in which it is clearly trying to tell you that I'm putting out a wrong option. Please see it. For example, very sweeping statements that in which words like this has never happened or, you know, all of these things, something like that, that those statements are generally wrong because, you know, world is always designed. This world is always designed in a way that there are exceptions in every case lesson. So sweeping statements would generally be wrong. Uh, then uh, there are questions in which a lot of figures are presented. Those are also areas where UPSC tries to play with the figures and tries to give uh, wrong statements. For example, uh, I think in 2017 prelims, there was a question on Green Climate Fund. And so that the figure was $100 billion, but it is UPSC had given something like $1,000 billion. So Whenever there are figures, you should be slightly mindful in marking options. Uh, then uh, in questions, there are generally, if there are four uh, options, UPSC actually interchanges the statements. So if it's giving a description of two organizations, it might so happen that it has jumbled it in a way that the description is, uh, you know, cross of each other. So these are slight, slight nuances that you'll realize when you do more and more mock tests. And, you know, if you see these things, the silly mistakes that most of the candidates do, because it's not like we don't know the paper. After we come, after we see a paper, it's always like, oh my God, this is such an easy question. Why did I get it wrong in the exam? It's because we have not really practiced on how to eliminate the wrong options. And that has to come from your mock tests. Yeah, and then that calmness in the examination hall, that is something is very important because if you are not calm, calm it is like a one day game, you can be out in the dark also. So yes, uh, Devyani, uh, like uh, how many days before the prelims should we stop giving mock tests? And second is how many days before prelims should we stop looking into the current affairs? Because uh, prelims, generally people say bahut current hai, bahut current hai, but when to stop? Like 10th is the, say for example, this year, 10th of August, we are having the prelims. So when should ideally they stop answer this test series as well as you're looking into new uh, current affairs? 
right so of course you shouldn't be attempting mock test very close to the exam because if you get a bad score your confidence would really go down and at the end of the day as you rightly talked about it's a game of how calm you are in the exam and that's why maybe 10 days before you should stop with mock tests at the last moment just try and solve 10 days before try and solve maybe one or two full tests and you know just uh, find out what is your optimal number of attempt a lot of people these days are going for attempting the entire 100 questions uh, because they think that the chances of improving their score is more with that for me it was always somewhere between 85 to 90 questions so try and find your optimal attempt level as well beyond which your negative is increasing so find that number for yourself and 10 days before you should stop uh similarly with uh, newspaper reading i think newspaper reading is actually kind of a regular preparation process you should not be leaving it yeah maybe right before prelims just give it half an hour no, don't give it like one one and a half hour but always be in touch with newspaper because as soon as your prelims would end you'd start with your mains preparation and again newspaper reading would have to be done in that phase so i won't say that you leave it but you reduce its time and of course newspaper reading is not as stressful as we think it is just take it a little easy don't read it for the purpose that oh question might come from this uh, in my prelims right now just read it that i am just continuously preparing for my mains so don't leave it just reduce the time just to keep in touch and just to be aware about your happenings yes. so yes yes absolutely yeah divyani uh, now tell us about the most interesting part of this whole journey that is one to one interaction with the board and you have interacted it twice so how has been your interaction with uh, this upsc uh, interview board because people are very scared some of them who are not very open uh, with people they are very scared so what how has been your interactions no so actually i have interacted with both sides and in my first uh, uh, interview i was actually very very nervous and i think it's because of that only that i could not uh, do as well as i should have you know we build this this scare about you know these five people are going to look at me and they're judging me and we develop so many insecurities that my profile is not strong enough or i'm not from a good college and you know i'd be judged for it there's nothing like that at all interview is actually a very pleasurable experience so prelims is the stage that's an elimination stage but mains and interview is the selection stage the board is sitting there because they want to award you marks they want you to get into the service they just want to have a good conversation with you you just have to be humble you have to be confident you have to be of course you have to have adequate knowledge about the detailed application form that you filled because that's the interviewer's window into your life and what who you are as a person but it's not something that you should be scared of because the moment you start getting scared you'll fumble over the easiest of things because you won't be yourself so see it as an experience see it as an opportunity to talk to very very knowledgeable experienced people of their fields and you know one day before the interview just calm your nerves talk to your parents do something that you like and when you are sitting outside your interview uh, board members boards uh, chairs just you know say a prayer think of something good go inside with a happy mindset don't go inside with a panic and nervous or anxiety state and your interview starts on a good note you go greet them with a smile be your normal natural self it's not going to be a scary experience at all now it's very easy for me to say all these things right now but when i was an aspirant i used to see these videos and i used to feel like yeah now you are at the other side of the pedestal so it's easy for you to say but i'm saying this with experience and all these things would come when you are confident in your own craft that will be there when you've prepared your dash properly 
and you are regularly in touch with your uh, current affairs and to get those nerves out to get that uh, feeling that i am an introvert or i cannot speak or express myself properly in front of these people try and give mock interviews not too many but just to get those jitters out of your system so yeah yeah one should not go inside the room with a preconceived notion that they are there to you know uh, they are there to bully you they are there to just interact with you okay divani how has been uh, your experience with next tires in this uh, your journey to your rank number 11 right uh, my experience with next ias has been very good uh, last year uh, before my mock interview i i had come for uh, next uh, last year before my real interview i had come to next ias for a mock interview and the feedback that the board provided and the reading material that i was given along with the questions that next ias prepared based on my dap were really helpful in uh, making me find those areas that i had missed upon and when i interacted with the board uh, here uh, they told me what i'm doing wrong if my answers are too long or you know if my face is saying that i don't know this answer how to tackle those situations and you know how to answer those uh, basic questions like why do you want to join the service or if you're already in a service why do you want to shift these are the questions that we are actually most afraid of because the knowledge based questions we can answer but to justify these properly is really the task and you know i, I said my answers here and i was told what i did right what i did wrong and that really helped me shape my performance better in the interview okay divyani it's like every it is said that everybody has a unique mantra to success so what is that unique thing that you, that you think is like that is the uniqueness in your preparation and if you would like to share with uh, the future would be candidates if you could share something on that uh right the unique thing in my approach to this exam would be uh, i think striking a balance in things uh i tried to do my study properly but along with that i did not just box myself into a room i did try and do other things in moderation as well so that you know i maintain my mental peace and i do not feel overworked because my journey has been as you know it's a long one so i used to play with my dogs a lot and i used to take time out to watch movies you know the kind of things that you know you do in your daily life i did not completely cut myself off from that of course that has to be moderated properly and uh, as far as the preparation goes i think having a belief in yourself that you can do it is very very important somewhere when we do not crack it in our first or second attempt we start to doubt ourselves a lot that if i am even capable of cracking this exam i think that is where you need to really believe in yourself and do not doubt yourself worth at all uh, specifically about the preparation i think patience consistency and lot of revisions is what made the base of my preparation so yeah yeah divani yeah one should not Uh, take this competition as a matter of life and death rather one should just enjoy this whole journey of upsc preparation of course the destination is very good but the journey itself is really beautiful and we should enjoy it that's it i think that is something which really makes the base for your selection to upsc uh okay divani it's like uh, we have discussed so many things from you are you on the social media also where some future candidates if they really want to learn from you or if they want to interact with you so can uh, can they like, interact with you are you on that uh, or no, is there not on, on yeah, yeah so i'm not on any social media i consciously decided not to engage in that during my preparation but uh, uh, i'm going to make a separate email account uh specifically for uh, interacting with any aspirants should they need any help from my side and i'll share the details with you and uh, you can put it out okay yeah that that would be really helpful because you know uh, always one is looking towards somebody who could help 
so that would be great so it was very nice talking to you divyani and in one or two lines if you could uh, say something uh, to the uh, motivating things to the would be aspirants and especially those who are going to write films this time right so i would like to start by saying that whatever you every aspirant whatever you're feeling right now i have felt all of that and please believe me that everybody who has put on a sincere effort he or she is perfectly capable of clearing the exam prelims is right around the corner put in as much effort as you can right now because these days these two weeks that you have at hand right now are very very crucial and do not waste your time right now study properly and believe in your effort believe in your hard work and there is absolutely no reason that you are not going to make it and my best wishes to everybody and i'm going to put out the uh, details of the email so that if anybody would specifically like to ask me something because in half an hour discussion you cannot really tell the nuances of your preparation completely yes. so if there are really specific points that somebody would like to ask i'd be sure to help out thank yeah, you you will be more than happy to share that uh, your email id that you will be sharing with us so devyani one thing that uh, we uh, we have come to understand is that there is no shortcut to success you have to slog yourself you have to work hard and destiny also favors the brave so you have to work hard and this is a very beautiful destination a very beautiful journey one should always aspire for this so all the best to you divyani for all your future endeavors and we would like to see you as a very successful bureaucrat all the best divyani thank you so much ma'am thank you and thank you for giving me this opportunity to put my story out to the aspirants thank you so much yeah thank you thank you thank, thank you. you okay bye